Operation Ward 57 presents Rock and Rally for the Troops, featuring Righteous Vendetta, True Holland, Lakeview Drive, Amazon, The Adarna, The Mothership, Mom's Rocket, Alien Nation, and Anti Hero. It all happens August 2nd, 2014 at Louis G's in Tacoma. For the wounded, the fight never ends. Hey! Do you want to metal? I could metal. Do you want to metal? I'll metal if you metal. So we're going to metal? Yes. Metal. Then it is settled. We shall... Metal. The queen of all things metal. DJ Diva Satya. feature may contain references to sex, drugs and rock and roll. Oh, and some bad language too.
Welcome to Airway Smackdown. This is DJ Diva Sachi. You're listening to the one and only Temple of All Things Rock, RadioRip.com. Got the boss man, Lockstar, in the chat room with me. Come and join us. Talk shit with us. And uh, we've got a great show on the air today for you. we got Peter Tuttle coming up in just a minute from Despite, way out in Stockholm, Sweden. I'm going to give you a little recap of the show I saw earlier this week. Epic show at El Corazon up in Seattle with Soulfly and some local support. That was a fabulous Tuesday night out. I'll tell you more about that in just a few minutes. And maybe even a little time to recap some stuff that we saw with Moondance. But right now, we're going to get right to the interview. I got Peter on the line. Hello, Peter. You there? Hey. How are you doing? Hey. I am doing fantastic. How are you doing? It's late night in uh, Sweden. What time is it for you? Uh, 2 a.m. <laughs> drinking and, uh, coffee. He just told me, and he's drinking coffee at 2 a.m. We really appreciate that you were willing to stay up this late to be on Radio Riff. I am very much appreciative for sure. So uh, let's talk a little bit about your band. I've been a fan of Despite for a while. I contacted you probably a month or so ago because I really wanted to talk to you guys on the air. Mm -hmm. um, your band was founded about 16 years ago, I read. Yep. Um, you're, not, you're not an original member, but can you tell us a little bit for my listeners who don't know about the history of Despite? Uh, yeah, the, the band was started in 98. Uh, and I think uh, Timmy, the guitarist, was the, one of the founding members. Uh, the first album didn't come out until like 2008, I think. Uh, it was called the, the In Your Despite, and after that they released uh, an album called Clenched, uh, also not uh, featuring me, uh, and then we just released this uh, new album called Epic, that's the first album where, where I sing. And uh, I have been listening to Epic for a while. You joined the band, um, according to my bio of the band, around the end of 2011, is that right? Mm, yeah, that might be right. I thought it was uh, 2012, but <laughs> yeah, if the well, bio says that. Your, okay, according, according to your bio, they were, they were looking into you then, and you, know, you really got going in 2012. What yeah. um, brought you to Despite? Because you, you had a couple bands that you've been in prior to that. I've got here Godzik, you, play, you sang with them, mm -hmm. Carnal Forge, Constructed, Backdraft, Dogface Gods. So you had yeah. a pretty extensive background prior to coming to Despite. What brought you to this band now? Uh, actually, I've been a friend of uh, Andre, the uh, lead guitarist uh, of Despite, for a while. Uh, we've been playing computer games online together and yeah we've sort of been talking about starting a band together so sometime or, or something like that and doing something musically together and when when they kicked their uh, singer out they thought of me so uh, that's how that went <laughs> I kind of got to ask because uh, Lockstar and I are both gamers what games mm -hmm. do you play? Oh, World of Warcraft, of course. <laughs> oh, whoa. I have uh, so yeah. many friends that are into WoW. That's pretty awesome. What? Uh -huh. Anything else? Uh, yeah, I have a PS4, so I, I play the games that are on, on that. And I like to play a bit of Battlefield occasionally. and Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, that's cool, because we're totally gamer geeks here at Radio Riff. If you oh. interviewed every single person on staff, 99.9% .9 of us do it. I yeah. don't know what it is about, you know, I guess the computer geek in us just, you know, connects with the music and the games. And some of the games uh -huh. have amazing music on them, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, there's sort of some... Diablo. Really, like, like, for example, yo, like Diablo, absolutely, uh -huh. has great mm. music on it. Uh -huh. Um. Some of the some of the games like I'm trying to think which other ones I've played. I mean I'm mostly an MMO girl. I've played like Ion and I've played mm -hmm. I played Guild Wars and I've done Star Wars and mm -hmm. I, that's kind of my thing. But yeah, the the music is also an, a big attraction with a lot of the games. Yeah. So you hooked up with the Spite in 2012. After yep. after that, what made you want to be a vocalist? Uh, actually, I think that started when I went to see. Pantera <laughs> uh, on their uh, Vulgar Display of Power tour. They they were oh, God, opening. Oh God! Great album. 
Yeah, they were they were the uh, opening act for uh, Megadeth here in Stockholm. So uh, I went to see Megadeth, and then I ended up like st- st- stopping listening to Megadeth and <laughs> buying all the Pan- Pantera albums, <laughs> and that kind of yeah, that was probably the moment where where I wanted to be a singer. <laughs> And uh, I'm a huge fan of Pantera as well, so I totally appreciate that you love one of the mm-hmm. bands that I really, truly love. And you feel like they were a big influence on your vocal style? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then, I mean, th- then bands like Fear Factory and Slipknot and, uh, yeah, Lamb of God came and, and I started listening to that. And Yeah. <laughs> All bands I love. We would get along very well, you and I. <laughs> We yeah. can get along extremely well. All stuff I really, really love. So mm-hmm. in June, um, let's see, I guess it was June of last year. Um, yeah. Is that when you did the recording or did you actually record prior to that? Because I'm looking at my notes here about your recording for Unexceptional, which is the yeah. name of the album that all of these tracks are from that you're on. Nope. It's uh, and, epic. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Epic. Epic. <laughs> Unexceptional was the first track that I heard from it. That, sorry yeah. about that. Right. Um, well. You guys recorded it at your own studio. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Uh, our drummer, um, he has a he has a studio uh, in the same like complex as our rehearsal studio. Uh, so we we recorded everything there, and it, it t- actually took our uh, took us like six months to to fully record these five songs. <laughs> Cause, uh, oh, I can believe that. I can yeah, because sure. we're we're really perfectionists, and we wanted to be, yeah, we wanted to be satisfied for once <laughs> with it. So we we kind of just let it take as much time as it needed. Well, as you said, the band had already put out a couple of demos, but it was time to get serious and really put out a, a really fine product, which I think you yeah. really did with Epic. Mhm. Yeah, uh, I, I think it's a, a big, like, uh, the, uh, the 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 quality difference in, in Epic and the previous two albums is like a huge step, because the older singer kind of sucked. <laughs> Well, and also being able to work on it for that period of time. You know, studio time is expensive. Yeah. Re- recording time is very expensive. To have the luxury of working in your own setup that mm-hmm. you can tweak the way you exactly want it. You can go back and do as many takes as you need without worrying about, oh, this is going to run over. Our costs are going to uh-huh. be astronomical. It's a great yeah. thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and you can have uh, and then, lots of beer as well. <laughs> and you can have lots of beer. Hell yeah. Huh. Nobody yells at you. Pick up those goddamn beer cans. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh-huh. um, it also says in my notes here that uh, you worked with uh, Plek Johansson as far uh-huh. as the mixing went. Yeah. And he's a great mi- he, you know, he's a great, uh, he's a great producer. He's been Grammy nominated. Uh-huh. He's worked yeah. with Scar Symmetry, who lots of my listeners are familiar with. He's worked with Watain, lots of other mm-hmm. bands. Yep. So that was a great gift to have him as well on board. Yeah, for sure. That was the uh, Oscar's idea, the drummer. <laughs> and that was probably a great thing too. So the album more or less was finished, I guess, early mid two thousand thirteen. Uh huh. And and as I said, unexceptional was the first um, single that I heard, and it's one of the tracks from the EP that you suggested that mm-hmm. I play for our listeners today. What do you like about unexceptional? I don't know. It kind of, it's. I mean, it's it's like a punch in the face. It's right off the bat. It's like, yeah, <laughs> a knockout. <laughs> and uh, and it, you, has, you, uh, it has melodies and uh, it has this uh, instrument that I forget the uh, name of. Uh, a special like different instruments 
you, you'll you'll hear it when you once you. Yeah, we we play. can talk about it afterwards if it clicks in your brain. Um, you yeah. co-wrote the lyrics, or wrote, or did you flat out write all the lyrics on this album? I I wrote all the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> Is it difficult writing lyrics in English for the English speaking audience? Uh, for you. No. No, not not for me. I I'm actually half American. My my dad's from Indiana, so uh, I kind of have the English thing in my head. But um, I I don't enjoy writing lyrics. Maybe it's because I'm I'm really I write li- really uh, personal lyrics. So it's kind of I'm kind of digging into my uh, my own head. <laughs> uh, in my own heart so uh, yeah <laughs> so you don't enjoy writing lyrics and yet you still do it yeah I mean, I mean as a singer you you more or less have to <laughs> I guess you do I guess you do but I'm I, I've got the lyrics here in front of me to all the tracks from Epic mm-hmm. and uh I can see how personal they are. So let's take a few minutes and listen to the first track. This is Unexceptional from the EP entitled Epic by mm-hmm. Despite. And you're listening to Radio Riff.
And we are back live. This is DJ D. Visati. You're listening to the Temple of All Things Rock. And that was Unexceptional from the EP entitled Epic from Swedish band Despite. I've got Peter Tuttle, the, their lead singer, right here on the line with me. Um, hey. I'm so glad that we get to talk about this CD. Like I was saying, I've really, really appreciated it. I've been listening to it almost nonstop, even before uh. the weekend, although since the weekend, I've really gotten it in my ear. I'm a huge uh. fan. Um, how much touring do you guys get to do in your area? <laughs> right now, we we have we don't have any tours planned, but uh, I mean that's that's part of being uh, uh, of the underground scene, I guess, <laughs> the indie scene. We we decided to release this album ourselves and not go with any label because we like. If we're going to go with a label, it has to be a major one that can pay for, I mean, tour support and stuff like that. And Yeah, so so we wanted to put this out first, like a, uh, like a more or less a promo, but, but still a, an album. Uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> I kind of for, forget, forgot where I was going there. <laughs> So when um, when you work with the band, I mean, one of the things you and I have in common is that we do a lot of social media, and you are mm-hmm. the social media face of the band. Yes. When I first found you guys on Twitter, I was very impressed by the fact that you had a couple USA chapters, if you will, um, mm-hmm. fan clubs here in the States. How did how did that come about? Because, like, there's Despite West Virginia, yeah, and yeah. there's Despite. <laughs> There's Despite Virginia, and I forget what other ones you guys have, but I thought that was pretty cool. How did you connect with that fan base? Well, that, was, that was the fans themselves that started asking if they could run street te- street teams. And, I mean, <laughs> why not? <laughs> Absolutely, why not? That's a neat thing that you have. You know, the, So you've got some fan base right here in the U.S., and as you said, you have a, a U.S. connection with your, your family. Mm-hmm. So, uh, major labels, are you listening? Get to Spite over here to the U.S. I think they would really do great touring because your sound is very compatible with a lot of what I'm hearing out um, yeah. on the scene, you know, at the moment. Is it very different than a typical Swedish band? Uh, yeah, I, I actually think that we have, uh, like, more of an American sound that, than the Swedish. I mean, of course, it's going to... Uh, it has some Swedish sounding stuff in it too, but um, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't sound like uh, In Flames or Meshuga. <laughs> exactly, no. that's what I was thinking too, because that is the kind of thing that one would think of typically. You know, mm-hmm. you would think of a very different sound. Although the musical style of Despite has changed over time, it's not always been the same. No, it used to be more like uh, it's, it sounded like Lamb of God, more or less. <laughs> but as uh, me and Andre joined the band, we kind of wanted to put a little more atmosphere and uh, a little more uh, melodies and stuff like that. Because I I'm I do both cleans and growls, uh, and I. And I kind of get bored if I only do growling. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> we wanted to be I very am- diverse, and uh, it doesn't have to sound a, a spe- specific way. We we kind of just uh, go with what what uh, what turns up, you know. <laughs> Right, right. And and I find it interesting. I'm I'm a vocalist myself. I, I'm classically mm-hmm. trained and I, I sing. Oh, and cool. I am always impressed by those of you who do both because mm-hmm. it's a very different placement. You got one placement for the growl and you got another placement for the for the cleans. Yeah. And going back and forth is not easy. No. <laughs> That's <laughs> it's right. It's not easy at all. So I'm always impressed by a band that can put together a show where they've got a singer that can do both and do both mm-hmm. well, which you do, which I feel that you do. Oh, so thanks. my hats off to you <laughs> there. So yeah, it's not easy to do. It's not easy yeah. to do. For those of you who, who don't sing, don't criticize until you try it. It's tough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, 
the track that I've been listening to probably the most as of recently is the one that you just created the video for, and that's As You Bleed. Uh huh. And I really love the video for that, by the way. Ah, it's really cool. Thanks. I made it. And <laughs> you made it. Tell us about yeah. the making of the video then. How did that work out? Wow. Uh, it was, it was uh, filmed uh, last summer on one of the hottest days. And we had these uh, 1,000 watt lights. We had 20, 20 of those running in a black room <laughs> in the middle of the summer. And it was so damn hot. <laughs> oh, my God. I bet. Uh, yeah, and I mean, it was sticky. There's a lot of blood in the movie, uh, in the in the video, and yeah, <laughs> uh, I I filmed it, and then uh, Matthias, uh, the our bass player, he filmed the parts where I was singing, and yeah. Wow. Wow. Mm. Why is it that it always works out that when you got to do something like that, it's always the hottest freaking day of the year? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> it never fails. I was talking to um, another band about a similar, you know, where they basically went to the butcher and got cow's blood, real cow's uh-huh. blood, and were throwing, throwing it all <laughs> over themselves. And they said the same thing, hottest freaking day of the year. And here we are mm-hmm. with the sticky stuff all over. <laughs> but it turned out beautifully. I love the video. I mm. love the video. Thanks a lot. Um, where did the inspiration come from from you to write As You Bleed? Where did that come from inside you? I I actually don't know about that one because I'm a uh, I'm not a violent guy. <laughs> but it, but the track uh, track is kind of brutal uh, and I I wanted it to to be uh, like a really bloody, messy uh, topic, so uh, I went with the <laughs> with the fighting thing. Also, I'm a I'm a fan of uh, UFC and yeah. <laughs> so that's ah, okay. Well, that would make sense because I thought there's there's got to be something that you visually saw or some mental idea that you focused on to get the idea for this lyric. Because as mm-hmm. you said, it's you know it's really dark. Let's get the rumble started. You know, yeah. fist slamming like atom bombs. Yeah, it's uh-huh. pretty violent. So I can see UFC. I can totally see UFC in this track. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a few minutes and listen to the track. It's called "As You Bleed." You can check out the video for it on YouTube or anywhere else you can find a video outlet. And this is once again, despite from Sweden, RadioRiff.com, bringing you.
we're back live once again. DJ Diva Satu with Peter Tuthill from Swedish band Despite. Oh, yeah. And uh, that was their track, As You Bleed. Um, their very recent uh, video uh, is out on YouTube. Uh, where else can you see the video, Peter? Uh, I don't know, actually. It's probably, probably v- just on, on Probably Vivo. On. It's probably on Vivo, and that's another outlet uh, in the U.S. where you can see them. But I go to YouTube mm-hmm. because uh, that's just the easiest place for most people to find. It's... Um, I've heard a lot about YouTube changing the way their videos are distributed. Have you guys heard anything about that over there, about the, the paying for, you know, the channels and all of that? I haven't heard a lot about it. Have you heard a lot about it? No, I've uh, actually not heard anything about that. <laughs> okay, well, that's good really? because I, I, there was a lot of talk on Facebook for a while about possibly um, them changing the way they do business and starting to charge for channels oh. and stuff. And we're all That's... kind of groaning, saying, okay, Facebook is messed up as much, you know, enough as it is. Sorry, Facebook, yeah. but it's the true. It's the truth. It just really sucks that people have to work their butts off now to get their posts seen by all of their fans mm-hmm. and their followers. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. No. And now you've got to go back and you've got to, you know, click the whole get notifications so you don't miss things. Mm-hmm. And it's a big, uh, it's kind of a big game they're playing with us so those of us that are in social media are all kind of like oh man you just made our job a lot harder (laughs) but uh we want to keep working for to get you guys out and and heard by people so Mm -hmm. during the break peter and i were talking about the fact that uh, despite us working on some new music oh yeah (laughs) and uh what are you working on tell us a little bit about that please well, we've we've been working on new material ever since uh, we finished recording Epic, so uh, we've kind of decided we, we've decided on one of the tracks, uh, and we're like close to finishing the other track. We're going to enter the studio hopefully in uh, now in August or in September and probably go uh, get it out uh, this fall sometime. Now as an indie band, you're not under constraints of a record label saying you have to have something out by this date, you have to do it this way, you have to do it that way. Mm-hmm. I've, I've talked to a lot of bands about... Um, in this independent band specifically about the different approaches they take. For example, some bands I've been talking to will just put out one track, yeah. you know, to keep to keep momentum going. Some of them will do an EP like you've already done with the five tracks and, and put it mm-hmm. out. S- some will still go and do the whole great big album. I mean, one of the, the bands I interviewed this year put together an album with 13 tracks on it. Yeah. Decided to sell it for what eight dollars or so on CD Baby mm-hmm. because they figure you know it's cheaper to buy the whole album than to go and buy a single track at a time for ninety nine cents or a dollar mm-hmm. nineteen or whatever they sell them for on Amazon. Um, what's your band's plan for the next set of writing? Are you going to put out one at a time? Do you want to do a full fledged album? What are your thoughts? We we've been talking about this lots because I mean. The industry has changed lots over the last couple of years, and people. Uh, I mean, uh, l- let's face it: pe- people don't want to pay for music anymore. <laughs> that that's no, they don't. That's how it work, they goes. Don't. Uh, but uh, we, we've we've talked about doing like releasing one or two songs every now and then uh, over uh, over the course course of a year uh, and instead of doing an album and then and then like yeah keeping it fresh and maybe uh, maybe do a video for every track as well we'll see what happens there are so many approaches that you can take now yeah as we said you know there's just i don't know if there is one right way but you know, people don't typically, people are less inclined, let's just say, mm-hmm. to buy an entire album. I yeah. know for myself, very often, if I've got a new band that I'm really interested in, I'll go and I'll listen to a couple on Amazon and I'll buy one or two. And then yeah. if I really love them, you know, if I really, really, really love them, I'll go out and buy mm-hmm. a hard copy. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, the way to make 
money, if there is a way to make money anymore as a band, is almost always through other merchandising. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it, because you just don't make it on the on the music anymore. Yeah, it's right. Really <laughs> tough. It's yeah, really tough. Yeah, t-shirts but, and hats. Yeah, and stuff t-shirts like and personalized stuff. You know that we can't get anywhere else because when I mm. when I go to the local shows, I always you know I try to pick that up from the local bands, and I always encourage people to do that. You know, mm. to support the bands by buying their merchandise. You know. Um, yeah. But I don't know if you guys have that on your website. You have a, an official website that's called despiteofficial.com, which I've looked at. You've got your discography there. Um, you've got your tracks you can pick up there. All of them, like even your older albums, like in your despite is there. Mm-hmm. Um, everything. Yeah, we, the we don't there have a stuff. We don't have a merch store uh, up yet, and we don't have any T-shirts printed either because that's. Uh, it all, all comes down to money and it all comes out of our own pockets so mm-hmm. it, it, I mean to to get that rolling you we got to pay for it <laughs> so and it's so not um, easy. no uh, right. as long as the people don't buy our, uh, the music it's really hard to do that stuff but but we're we're working really hard to get that going cuz i know uh, there's a uh, there's a lot of interest for despite merch so and that's yeah that's not surprising because that's like I said really the way especially in the US that's how it works here it seems really well is that you know people aren't always willing to play for the tunes but man they'll shell out the money for a shirt they'll shell out the money Mm -hmm. for a hat a keychain a flask uh, uh-huh. You name it, you name it. Yeah. They, you know, bands out here have learned to offer all of that stuff to get their name in front of people, and mm-hmm. um, just to have some of that income. You know, besides the the obvious of selling tickets to their shows, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I mentioned Despite Official, which is your website. Where else can people go to find out about what the band is doing? We have a Twitter account, uh, and it's also Despite Official. Uh, we have uh, Facebook, uh, and it's uh, also despite the official. And then we have a Reverb Nation, which is uh, only despite, I believe. Uh, and YouTube, it's uh, despite the official as well. What I would encourage my listeners to do who are listening and really like the music, you know, you can. You can get the word out for the band. You know, they've got their local street teams, which is great. Um, go on your Facebook page and, and, and uh, post something about one of the links to their new video, for example, which is mm-hmm. something I've been doing. I go on Facebook and I do, I'll go on Twitter and do that. You know, have your friends check the band out. Find them on YouTube. You know, like their Facebook page and yeah. stay on top of it. And like I said, you've got to go to the top now. When you find a band that you really like, you've got to go up there and you've got to click on the friends thing and and check get notifications or else Facebook will be selective and they won't give you all of them. And I want all of them. If it's a band I like, I want to hear all about it. I want to I don't want to miss anything. Yeah. So, you know, so do that, you know, and, and encourage your friends to check out Despite. They're a great band. They're a great band. We got one more track to listen to. And uh, the one that uh, that Peter picked out for us to listen to is called "Give Me Life," and it was a band that it was a track that you said you actually started writing for your other band, which is Godzik, which you're still doing, but mm-hmm. you really wanted to get it finished, so it wound up on the Epic EP. And what is it that you like about "Give Me Life"? Why did you want me to play it today? Well, it's I, I wrote the whole song except one one uh, part <laughs> but I wrote the both the music and the lyrics and uh, it's kind of the, the most uh, personal song off of epic for me <laughs> okay so it's a, you, you you mentioned about how you really a don't really like writing lyrics but as a singer it's kind of required territory mhm and uh as as this one being personal, did that make it harder for you to write, or did it just come out of you? It just comes out, <laughs> I guess, because because it's uh, it's taken from real life, and 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what's your uh, songwriting uh, process like? Do you like sit with a notebook in the corner in the middle of the night and or do you like, you know, sit down and say, okay, I'm going to schedule X amount of time to write the tracks for this? Or is it like scrawled on a napkin when you're having coffee, you know, in the morning? <laughs> How does that work for you? What works best for you in terms of songwriting? Uh, it, it pops up in my head uh, and then I use my phone to record it so so I don't forget <laughs> that's what I do with oh. riffs as well I like to oh, okay. uh, hum it into the phone <laughs> for later use uh, is, yeah, yeah isn't I, it cool I kinda, how we have the tools I, I, to do that now it's great yeah <laughs> I, I kind of capture the moment in the lyrics and stuff I mean, back in the day, I lived in L.A. for a while, and my roommate at the time was a songwriter, and we used to go to songwriting workshops together all the time, and it was like, okay, you know, we'd write on the... Anytime we thought of a song title, we'd be, like, scrolling it down. That would make a great song title. That would make a great song title, you know? Yeah. And then we always had notebooks. Like, she had two notebooks, and I typically had two notebooks, and we were all scribbling down ideas. But now, yeah. like you said, you can just grab your cell phone and sing a lick into the cell phone... It's yeah. so much easier not to lose those melodic and those those musical ideas before it was yeah. really hard to retain them because that's harder to put down, especially for people who can't write. I can write, you know, music. Mm -hmm. I can write and read it, but for people who can't, you lose yeah. it. So it's cool that we can do that now. We have so many more tools yeah. than yeah, we had great. even like Computers. five years ago. Oh, uh, Computers and cell phones, that's the, <laughs> that's the shit. It is, man, and I'm a computer junkie. The day I got my first one, I think I was on my computer for like 10 solid hours, and they had to yeah. drag me away to eat, and that was years <laughs> ago, back when they were still, the little icon that came up that said, working, working, yeah. little smiley face, you know, and ever since I've had it, you know, mm -hmm. that's just been where I've been. I love yeah. it. Peter, I want to th say thank you to you, because it's nearly 3 o'clock in the morning for you, so mm -hmm. thanks for slugging that coffee and being on the air with us today. Yeah. And uh, for we're, we're going to listen to. Oh, it's been great having you. We're going to put one more track on from the band. And uh, guys, I want to encourage all my listeners on Radio Riff and beyond to go to Despite's Facebook page, check them out, give them a like, um, go to their Twitter to find out what the band's up to, go to their official page and grab a couple tracks. And if you like them, grab a couple more. And uh, spread the spread the love, spread the love, because these indie bands, as you as you know, do not make any money doing what they're doing. They do it for the love, mm -hmm. and they need all support we can give them. So thanks again, Peter. Um, thanks. Mom. Keep me posted as those new tracks are recorded, and I'll want to get those on the air and get them out to my listeners. You bet. Love it. Um, and my listeners are saying in their awesome interview, you guys kick ass. You do. And uh, thanks again. This is DJ Diva Satya. You're listening to the one and only Temple of All Things Rock. And we get time for one more despite less. Stand apart, must in the hole. The night away to praise the Lord to God. Determination has been 
All right, thanks again to Peter Todd, who lived despite for uh, staying up late, slugging that coffee, and talking to us about his band's EP, which is called Epic. And we listened to a bunch of tracks from that. You can check them out at www.despiteofficial.com, as well as the usual media outlets. I will definitely be giving them some more Ape Airplane. As Peter mentioned, they're working in the studio coming this August. And uh, going to get on some more stuff for them because they deserve it. They need to be over here touring. I really think they would absolutely fit in with a lot of American mu- musical taste. God, I wish they could come over here and tour. And my buddy AJ, <laughs> who's always listening, just said to me, good interview and killer band. Mm-hmm. 